I suppose if you asked what is the goal which we're offering young people at the moment, it's basically personal success. Make the most of it yourself. Do as well as you can compared with other people. Get better grades. Get a better income. And, of course, if your goal is a comparative one and you look at the effect of that at the level of society, it's zero sum because if somebody wins, somebody has to lose. And that's not great for the losers. Um, but it's actually not great for the winners. We've got from the Gallup World Poll quite good series now of stress. Do people feel their life is stressful? And in spite of the fact we're so much richer previous generations, uh, we are also more stressed, and that doesn't make sense. So what we need is not a zero-sum goal. We need a positive-sum goal where we're getting as much as we can of our happiness from not being better than other people, but uh, contributing to their happiness. Uh, and that means that for, for each of us, the goal has got to be uh, in our lives to create as much happiness as we can in the world. I think that's a, a wonderful goal for everybody, from the youngest to the oldest. And I think we've got a great idea um, that has been established um, by modern psychology, or reinvented, you might say, um, that the way to make ourselves feel better is to work on changing our thoughts. They, because they're accessible, directly accessible to us. And what we have to do, essentially, is to... S we all have negative thoughts constantly. It's to separate ourselves, find ways of separating ourselves from our negative thoughts um, and creating space for positive thoughts uh, and positive action. So that's what modern psychology, positive psychology, uh, is telling us. It's also, of course, what uh, was uh, said uh, centuries ago in the East, and so we are getting also the same message carried on the practice of mindfulness and other uh, Eastern practices, which can also be very, very helpful. But I, I want to talk mainly uh, about the care of others, uh, and of course that's partly in your personal life, um, but it's uh, very importantly in your work life. So of course we've got to know what are the most important things that affect people's happiness, uh, and they are, uh, in particular, uh, mental and physical health and human relationships, family work and community. Uh, income is also uh, important, but less than those. And how do I know this? Because we've done a lot of work on it. Uh, and here is the main diagram. Uh, so this is from Britain, um, but actually we've done it for a number of advanced countries. It comes out the same everywhere. Uh, the top factor explaining the spread of happiness this is a very simple question. Have you ever been diagnosed for anxiety or depression? Uh, next is quality of work, um, which uh, is also, of course, to do with, the, uh, with relationships. And next is your family life. Are you partnered? And physical health, uh, then income. It turns out that the best predictor of whether somebody will have a happy life as an adult is whether they were happy when they were a school child. That's much more important than the grades they get. But if you ask what the teachers think they're trying to do, uh, they will all, all tell you that whether or not they want to, they have to uh, focus on getting them the grades. Uh, this is not a good scene. Uh, it's producing a lot of mental stress for young people. We need to get the well-being uh, of the children established as a goal of equal importance, as it is in the Netherlands, for example, with their academic achievement. Uh, we need to encourage schools to measure how the school is doing with the well-being of its children, to teach life skills uh, weekly. Then people go to work. And here's the shocking fact that the least happy time in the day is, guess when? When you're with your boss. We've got to uh, have managers uh, chosen for their ability to inspire and not just to uh, dragoon. Um, and we've got to give workers more control over how their work is organised and there are good methods of doing that. Then, of course, there's the community where people live. Um, incredibly important to have good services, but also because those good services create social connections, which are very important uh, to people's sense of belonging. Services for children, as you know, have been cut in our country. Services for youth have been cut. Services for old people have been cut. Uh, benefits have been cut. 
Um, of course, uh, even if we got them better, we would still have some mental health problems. The work of therapists is very important, and it, it can go beyond depression and anxiety, and it should be available, obviously for children, including behaviour uh, problems for children, which are not yet properly treated at the moment, um, but also for family conflict, domestic violence, drug and alcohol, these are all uh, psychological uh, problems. So we need a better society, but we need to help people personally uh, as well. Who can lead the charge? Well, I'm an economist, <laughs> and I do think that I actually came to economics later in life because it had this idea, basic idea that you've got to have a clear objective and then you've got to think of what you do on the basis of how do you maximise the objective using whatever resources you have. Um, so I think economists can lead the charge, but we need uh, that, 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 that in, in getting happiness established as the objective. We need politicians to listen and of course we need to have scientists who are thinking about um, future generations uh, being as important as the present generation. So, uh, I think we are at the beginning of our happiness revolution um, and I think that all of us can play a great part and we'll get there.